Media matters. I'm not talking about the group, I mean the actual media that you consume matters. It's important because it shapes how we view things. It is responsible in a lot of ways for our perspectives and for our biases. So if, for example, you only read The Express, chances are you're not going to realise how much of a shit show Brexit is going to be and how appalling this government and Theresa May's government has handled it, but certainly this government. Now with that said, The Express every now and then pops up on my newsfeed on my phone. And with a headline, EU caves in, UK secures huge negotiation victory as Brussels finally blinks talks today. Well, that baited me. And it's baited me because I've kept a very close eye on Brexit. So this is going to be one of the few that I'm not going to link down. Um, because it's on the Express. If you want to find it, you can find it. But it's trash. And I'll go through why as we go through. So, uh, the EU caves. Okay. Brussels has finally caved in on its Brexit demands ahead of the final round of talks between the two sides this week. Okay. I mean, look, I'm looking for good news with Brexit. I'm genuinely looking for good news. So, okay, these hard lines that they've not budged an inch on over the last four years. What is it? In a major concession, the EU is now ready to drop its demands on agreeing a broad agreement on the area of divergence before drafting a trade text. I mean, the EU have been asking for specifics for a long time. That broad area, realistically, it's... I can't believe we have to go through this. In a negotiation, one person comes in, says, I want all these things. The other person comes in, says, I want all these things. And you work from that. EU's come in. Okay, here are our red lines. UK, what do you want? That's been the response. I was trying to think of something funny, but honestly, I think a brain fart is just as fitting. The EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, uh, had initially refused to do this and was intent on agreeing many of the elements before proceeding. There's a reason why he wants to agree on a lot of elements because we don't have a lot of time. Remember Boris said this would be done March and then June and then July and at no point did his team, the team of Brexiteers, actually say what they want because they've still not said what they want and we're running out of time. Uh, many of them before seeing it, Michel Barnier uh, has now confirmed his intent to begin working on the draft legislation in a sign Brussels wants a deal to be agreed by soon. Yeah, they've not hit that. They've not hit that in any way, shape or form. The EU wants a deal with us. They are going to take a hit if when we leave without a deal but they've also been preparing for us to leave without a deal it's not just the financial side of things it's also a a sign of respect for so many years that we've worked so closely together they are our literal and figurative closest allies again four years we've been slapping them in the face for four years they've been going all right look We'll give you as much as we can. We'll bend over backwards. This is what we can't fold on. Everything else, we're all good. Bill McLuckin. 
You're a fucking idiot. Or you're a liar. Or both. <clears throat> Brussels has also backed down from its threat to suspend trade talks amid the uproar caused by the UK's internal market. Really haven't, because again, the UK hasn't said what it wants. Negotiations of elements of Brexit talks, such as fisheries and a level playing field, will also be extended to give Michel Barnier and his counterpart David Frost more time to come to a compromise. The Brexiteers are not talking about fisheries. We're not talking about fisheries. The UK is not talking about fisheries to the EU. It's something that's not being discussed. Apparently, it was important to all the Brexiteers. But it's not been discussed at all. So again, this is this is the EU sat down. Okay, we know that this thing was really important because we're not blind isolationists and we can actually see what's going on in your country. We've heard you say fisheries are really important. So let's talk about that. Now we're not to be the firm, we're not to be the firm. No, no. Uh, okay, well I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll give you a little more time on that. We'll, we'll give you as much time as we can on that. They've conceded. They've conceded and we're the best. A really silly mood today, I hope this lasts. <clears throat> Due to the EU's concessions, it's not a concession bill. Uh, UK officials are now expecting to negotiate on detail elements such as fishing quotas in return, the time reported. I haven't brought it up once this year. I haven't brought it up once this goddamn year. The week's talks are seen as crucial in laying the groundwork of a deal before it is then agreed next month. I hope, I hope we get a deal next month. I do. But this is all shit that should have taken place years ago. Years ago. And then, of course, we have to uh, remember Boris Johnson and his entire government and the entire Conservative Party, who have made it very difficult to vote out a Conservative in, in following elections, have all said... Fuck you, we don't care if we agree to anything. We'll do what we want when we want to do it. As untrustworthy as we could possibly be. One British rule said, The most important thing is that we start moving forward on negotiations over texts so that we can get further forward and not get timed out. Yeah, I agree. But we should have been doing this years ago. At the very least, we should have been doing this at the very start of the year. Now, I know we had some issues, but conference calls are a thing. I work with US and Chinese companies all the time. I've never been to the States. I've never been to China. Conference calls are a thing. And it's not that the other side wasn't open to having them. It's that they have consistently seen the British side is just wasting time. They've got more important things to do. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I, I can't because Bill. What's his face? Bill McLuckin is disingenuous. He's incredibly dim at best and he's a liar at worst what he's doing with with <laughs> what often happens in the daily express is they're doing something that's far more dangerous than an actual lie they're giving you a bit of truth and then surrounding it with bullshit because once you get that little bit of truth oh okay well that bit was true oh that that bit was true Okay, then I'm not going to question anything else you put out because you're reliable. No. Yes, they want to talk. Yes, they want to extend uh, the negotiating table. 
they want to do it predominantly because we are close working allies, or at least we were. Not because they've caved, not because they've conceded on something, not because they're in a game of chicken. That's not how negotiations work. This is the thing, and when it comes to it, that Brexiteers still don't really understand. When it comes to January 1st, we're not just isolating ourselves from Europe and pretending the rest of the continent doesn't exist. We lose damn near every single trade agreement and trade deal that we have with the entire globe. That is a massive chunk that needs to be recouped. When that happens, by default, we go into WTO if we want to trade with other countries. That means tariffs. Stop listening to Jacob Rees-Mogg, he's a fucking moron. The head and the former head of the WTO have told you how the WTO works. It works on tariffs. That's how it works. And so far, the dipshits running the country, the best they have come up with is, well, if you do this thing, then we won't put tariffs on your products. Okay. Europe doesn't put tariffs on our products and they're offering us a lot more. As I said before, media matters. It's important where you get your information from. It's important to diversify where you get your information from. Because people like Bill McClucken, as I said, He's incredibly dim at best, and he's outright lying to you at worst.